This is VEASAN's College Football Betting Podcast. Welcome in another edition of the VEASAN College Football Betting Podcast. Here we are, Championship Week, Matt, alongside Matt Humans. I am Tim Murray. We have got Power 5 games. We've got Group of 5 games. We're going to break it all down. Where does this rank for you? Is this a great weekend or... I feel like you're just like me. Want more games? Uh, this is kind of like the hangover after the party. It, it is, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it kind of sucks how fast the uh, college football season flies by. You know, you get here to first week of December, and all of a sudden we're down to eight or ten games, and half those games you might not care about. And but the bowl season oh, is uh, going to be great. And I love the bowl season, even though it's a lot different than it used to be. Uh, I'm, I have to be honest. I think conference championship this week, uh, this year, is a little bit of a downer. I'm not, you know, we haven't had the crazy upsets, and uh, we don't have, I, I don't think, the most intriguing matchups in some of these games. I like the Pac-12. I like the SEC. Uh, Big 12's okay, but Tim, we don't have great matchups in these uh, conference championship games, but let's see if we can find a, a few winners. Yeah, we will try, no doubt about it. And let's start on Friday night, Matt, right here in our backyard, Allegiant Stadium, Oregon taking on Washington. Of course, these two teams have played already this year, October 14th in Seattle, and Washington gets the 36-33 to victory, and it feels like it's been two teams on completely different paths since that game. However, they're both undefeated since they played that game. Washington remains 12-0, and but right now, depending on where you look, 9.5 or 10-point underdog, that 10, as we record, is uh, sitting there at Circa. Uh, just looking at the six games, Matt, these teams have played each since they played each other. Washington, 15-7 over Arizona State, 42-33 over Stanford. You could argue fortunate to win both of those games, a game that we were on the wrong side of. You went to. Washington beats USC 52-42. We'll stop you there quickly. Those first two you talked about, Washington was a 28-point favorite, essentially a four-touchdown yep. favorite in those first two. Got lucky to escape both. And then the USC game, I thought uh, some the ball really bounced the Huskies' way at the end of that game. That was not a 10-point game. That should have been a one-score game where USC had a shot to win at the end. But anyway, go on. I, I think the, the trend here is that uh, – the Washington Huskies have been a little bit lucky to win eight in a row by 10 points or fewer. 35-28 against Utah, 22-20 to against Oregon in the pouring rain where they didn't score a point in the second half, and then mm-hmm. last week a game-winning field goal against Washington State. You flip it over to the Oregon Ducks, 5-1 and ATS since the loss uh, on the road at Washington where, by the way, they were a three-point underdog. Uh, they took care of Washington State, 38-24, to dominated Utah on the road, 35-6, to hammered Cal 63-19 did not cover against USC at home as a two touchdown favor 36-27 and then their final two games easy victories over Arizona State and Oregon State so Matt you look at this Oregon team 9-2-1 and ATS on the season looking for revenge but my question to you is has this number gone too far hitting double digits at a handful of spots I hope so I took 10 with Washington, and uh, it's not a big bet for me. But uh, when you got two teams, like you said, that uh, have already played, and Washington won the first time as a two and a half point favorite, and now you flip it. And Washington has, has not lost a game since, and all of a sudden there's a 10 point dog on a neutral. That's, that's a dramatic line shift, I think, a little bit too much for me. And still, it's a, a Washington team with a coach I think we all respect, and Kalen DeBoer. A quarterback in Michael Penix has been among the best in the country uh, this season, even though he hasn't been as sharp in the past four or five weeks. And a Washington team that knows how to win. I think Washington will find a way to make this a close game and have a shot to win this one as well. I might be dead wrong. I, if I've talked to 20 people I respect about this this week, 18 of them think Oregon's going to win in a blowout. So it's kind of odd, Tim, to say this, but I'm taking the contrarian side, which is an undefeated team, it as is, an underdog. It, it is. And, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy when you look at it. You don't see too many handicapping scenarios quite like this one. Yeah, it is. It's fascinating because, to your point, people that we respect, that we talk to, are thinking similarly. Uh, and then you look at the VEASAN betting splits, and it's early, and the game will be on Friday night. 
70% of the bets on Washington right now, that courtesy of DraftKings. So uh, I don't have a play on this game. Um, you know, my curiosity, and, and you might want to earmuff it because I know you love uh, Heisman talk, but with the Bo Nix situation, and uh, he has now become the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy based off of the betting odds. Now, you talk to different people out there, and uh, while they're not allowed to disclose who they're going to vote for, Matt, it does feel like, at least the people I've talked to, that they're leaning a little bit towards Jaden Daniels, but Jaden Daniels of LSU not playing. So I haven't decided if, Matt, with a 30-1 to ticket in pocket on Bo Nix, is it a hedge to take Washington on the money line at plus 320? Is it that correlated? Is there a way where Oregon wins and Bo Nix does not win the Heisman Trophy outside of, yes, you know, sure. a couple turnovers here and there. So I'm, I haven't decided which way I'm, I'm ultimately going to go here, uh, but no play as for me feeling there's a, an advantage on one side or the other. I would think that if uh, Oregon does not win this game, if you were looking at a hedge, if Oregon does not win, Nix is not going to win I the agree. Heisman. So if you want to play Washington on the money line, that's somewhat of a hedge. You could even play a little on the money line, a little on the points, because if Oregon wins a close game and Nix doesn't play that well, I think Jaden Daniels still has a, a decent shot to win the Heisman because you know all this, all all these numbers are floating around. Everybody sees it right now. How Jaden Daniels has had an historic season in terms of numbers compared to other Heisman winning quarterbacks. His disadvantage is he's not playing this weekend. But if uh, Bo Nix doesn't play well. Who knows? Dan Daniels might walk away. I think it's kind of a 50-50. Probably give. I know if you look at the betting odds right now, Nix is a slight favorite. I would give him a uh, probably uh, a slight advantage in uh, winning the Heisman because if he if he does play well and wins this week, I think he's probably going to steal it or or win it, earn it, however you want to phrase it. But it's between those two. You know, one thing, and uh, I, I heard our our friend Will Hill talking about this. Um, do we see Bo Nix using his legs a little bit more? We saw him run for a touchdown against Oregon State uh, in these championship games. And, you know, Jalen Milrow, I think, could utilize his legs quite a bit uh, this Saturday uh, against uh, Georgia. So uh, that, that might be something if you're looking to get in the prop market. Because this is such a big weekend with so many limited games, you're going to look at the prop market. There's going to be much more offerings out there. Uh, lastly, for me on Michael Penix, you mentioned just kind of, it, it, you know, a lot of people have said this doesn't look 100% healthy. And you look at some of the numbers, you know, in the month of September, they played five games. Granted, they had Tulsa thrown in there and Michigan State. He averaged 400 passing yards per game in five games in the month of September. In October, just three games, and that included the Oregon game when he threw for 302, 315. In the month of November, Matt, he has thrown for an average of 239 yards per game. 256 against USC, 332 against Utah. In the pouring rain against Oregon State, 162. And then just 204 last week against Washington State. So it just it feels like something's a bit off uh, with with Michael Penix here uh, down the stretch. That said, though, they have been able to run the ball with Dylan Johnson quite successfully sure. this past month. Well, Washington went into the USC game on November 4th with the 117th ranked rushing offense. And the Huskies have been able to run the ball much more effectively uh, late in the season. Dylan Johnson actually had 256 against USC and 104 against Utah, 89 against Oregon State, 82 against Washington State. So Washington's been much better running the ball. I go back to the first game on October 14th, Oregon at Washington. I thought Michael Penix was banged up late in that game in the second yep. half, and uh, that's why I was looking actually to bet against uh, Washington the next week when Which Arizona we State came in, and I did. And I, I thought Michael Penix was banged up then, so – uh, yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, obviously. Uh, it feels like now there could be some weird shenanigans with Alabama and Georgia, but it feels like a de facto play-in game here on Friday night with a, to with a spread of 10 and a total of 66. Oregon, going back to that game, outgained Washington 541-415. to 0 for 3, though, on fourth downs. And, of course, uh, the all-important one uh, there late in that game, up 33-29. I'll throw one question to you. Is there a chance that Oregon, with one loss – wins this game, and does not make the four-team playoff. Yes. It's very that would be very neat. minimal, but uh, there is a chance. That would be very unfortunate if that happened. I think yeah. there's the possibility of uh, Alabama beats Georgia, Florida State wins, and uh, 
Texas and wins? T- uh, no, I think they'd get in over Texas. Yeah. Uh, who am I missing? Texas here? has a win. And Michigan at, wins. Texas has a win yeah. at Alabama. I know. <laughs> I mean, and let's let's get to it. We might not be able to yeah. fully break it down. Noon on Saturday, number seven Texas taking on the pokes of Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State had to come back and beat BYU on Saturday in order to get themselves in to the Big 12 championship game. And as we sit here, 15's out in the market. You can get as high as 16 at Circus Sports, a total of 55, Matt. Uh, I have a Texas future to win this conference, so certainly I'm thinking about do I try to middle this situation. Uh, You like the pokes a little bit here, plus the points. Uh, I do. I like Mike Gundy in the underdog role. And I think you know, a lot of times in sports betting, you want to bet the opposite of what you saw last. I, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people who watch Washington, or excuse me, who watched Oregon. Can I get the team right? Can I, <laughs> how about Oklahoma State? <laughs> we just talked about Washington and Oregon. Now we're talking Oklahoma State. A lot of people who watched Oklahoma State a week ago say, hey, Cowboys are down 18 to a bad BYU team. Had to win in two overtimes. Don't worry about that, okay? Erase that from your memory. Also remember that Georgia struggled to beat Georgia Tech. Alabama needed a miracle to beat Auburn. You know, so forget what you saw last. I think what the Cowboys' the key is, Ollie Gordon is the nation's leading rusher, 1,580 yards. And that's with getting only 19 carries, a total of 19 carries in the first three games. Alan Bowman's playing much better at quarterback. Mike Gundy in the dog role is dangerous. He covered against Baylor in the Big 12 playoff as a seven-point dog. Uh, I know we we need more time to break this game down, but uh, the bottom line is I took the points with uh, Oklahoma State. Or on the Big 12 championship and championship week in a hole. Coming up on the other side. This is VEASAN's College Football Betting Podcast. The holidays are here, folks, and let Omaha Steaks take the guesswork out of gifting. Go to omahasteaks.com and save 50% off site-wide. Plus, when you use the promo code VEASAN at checkout, you'll get an additional $30 off. Send tender, juicy, butcher's cut filet mignons, mouth-watering burgers, Gourmet Jumbo Franks are even easy-to-prepare meals that are ready in a flash. Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today, knowing you're ordering the very best. Visit omahasteaks.com. Take advantage of 50% off site-wide, plus use that promo code VSIN. that's V-S-I-N, at checkout. Get an extra $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required you know i had uh, i got a friend in town this weekend you know him joey tunes yeah joey fortuna pro sports better uh from the east coast he said uh can you recommend a steakhouse i said how about t-bones out at red rock how about uh salt grass over at golden nugget maybe oscars over at the plaza he's yeah. like no nah, no nah, i want one that's not in the casino i said okay how about just ordering some omaha steaks because uh, that's as good as anything and I, i'm a big fan of omaha steaks Sounds like a winner to me. Yep. Maybe we can exchange that. We'll just I'll send you one, you send me the other, and uh, we'll have ourselves a, a happy Christmas as we watch San Jose State take on Coastal Carolina in the Hawaii Bowl. That was announced, uh, by the way. Your first bowl announcement came out on Thursday. I am uh, looking into airfare to get out there to watch that game live. You know how much I love the Hawaii Bowl. I've been there once. I want to try to make the trip again this year, so if you want to go. Uh, there are plenty of good flights, flight times available. Go watch the video of Brent Brennan, the head coach of San Jose State, come in as the team is told they are headed to Hawaii. He's shirtless with a big surfboard. He's got sunglasses on. Uh, always love to see those types of video. Kind of cool. Chevin Cordero will wrap up his collegiate career. Former Hawaii coach yeah. from – or former Hawaii quarterback from Hawaii will wrap up his career there in Honolulu. All right. Um – Final thoughts on Oklahoma State and Texas. You are taking the points with the Pokes. Oklahoma State catching 16 at Circus Sports, a total of 55. I thought about getting involved, and I might take a little bit on Texas team total, which I believe is at 35. Just with the thought, and I've heard this echoed from a number of people, that there could be some style points involved. Texas 
is not in great shape. They need Florida State to lose. Of course, a game we will get to a little bit later on here. But uh, I thought about taking a team total. I, I saw a 35 out there earlier today. Uh, so not an official play, just uh, something I was looking at there. But uh, for me, I'm just going to sit back, wish your bet on, and hopefully uh, we can maybe get a middle here because uh, I've got Texas to win the Big 12 at plus 120. Yeah, I took uh, 15, and I got a little bit more of 15 and a half, and then the circuit goes to 16. I'm not going to add another bet at 16. If it gets to 17, I might bet it a little bit more. I don't think that's going to happen. But the, the narrative right now is Texas needs style points to mm-hmm. get into the playoff. And, you know, it does, it's not that easy just to step up there and run up to score on the mullet. Mike Gundy's not going to lay down for you in this game. I do think he's better in the dog role. And I think, you know, Tim, it's been peculiar at the end of this season where you haven't had the upsets as many. Yeah. You know, as we typically see, we almost had Alabama getting knocked off by Auburn. We just haven't had the upsets. you got to think there's one coming this weekend somewhere. I don't know if it's Oklahoma State knocking off Texas. I'd be happy if uh, uh, the Cowboys just cover. But is there going to be an upset, a big upset this weekend? And I, I mean, is Louisville over Florida State a That's big upset? It's not really upset? a big upset. It's two now. and a half point yeah. spread. Uh, I wouldn't say it is. I mean, you know, I went through it. Uh, you've got your top four teams are all undefeated, Matt. Number five, Oregon lost to number three, Washington. Number six, Ohio State lost to number two, Michigan. Number seven, Texas lost to number 12, Oklahoma. Number eight, Alabama lost to number seven, Texas. It really hasn't been. I was trying to think of the you, – you had mentioned – I don't want to spend too much time on this, but you had mentioned, Matt, the biggest shocker to you, at least in the middle of the season, was the fact that Arizona went to Washington State and won by 38. Well, now Arizona's ranked 15th, and Washington State fell completely apart. So I, I don't know what the craziest – you know, uh, store or, uh, result of the year. Maybe New Mexico State winning by three touchdowns on at the Auburn. road at Auburn. I mean, that maybe that's be- a big one. How about uh, Hawaii is a twenty-point underdog beating Air Force by two touchdowns? Yeah, but right. an Air Force team that ultimately lost right. their final four games. Yep, so exactly, very, uh, very unusual that we haven't had that big upset. But to your to your point, Matt, maybe we get it this weekend. Maybe we get it. It's not going to be a big upset, but it certainly would uh, throw a wrinkle and a wrench uh, into the committee's decision-making process as we head to 4 o'clock Eastern CBS, number one Georgia, taking on number eight Alabama. Uh, This number got as high as six. It is now trending a little bit back towards the dog. Four and a half out there. You can get a five and a half if you like Georgia. You know, you could try to middle, you know, because games land five all the time, Matt. Um, But five and a half is out there at some spots in favor of the dogs. Four and a half is low uh, if you do like the uh, Georgia Bulldogs in this one. Uh, I've, I've got a small play on this game. I'll get to it here in just a moment. But not an official play for you uh, on this one, but early thoughts on this Georgia Alabama game because it to me Matt it feels a little bit reminiscent of 2021 when Georgia was undefeated they were the favorite against Alabama everyone just wrote Georgia in beating (laughs) Alabama and the Crimson Tide granted they had Bryce Young on that team but they went out and won 41 to 24 in a real dominant fashion probably not going to shock you but I was on Alabama in that game not surprising at all taking the points and actually was able to get seven that week and I was hoping to get seven this week and uh, never got there, Tim. So it's dropped from six to five and a half. So I'm not going to uh, grab the points with the Tide yet. Uh, you were talking about how you could bet this game. I think I'm going to play this over the total. Yep. And uh, I know you like it over the total. And the more I look at it, you know, it's Georgia-Bama, but it's, you don't have the same lockdown defenses that you've had in the past with these two programs. And I think you got a chance for a shootout to develop in this game. So if you can play over 54, I uh, DraftKings at 54 and a half right now. I think there's still 54. Yep, 54s are still out there. Uh, I think that's a decent bet. That's probably the way I'm going to play it. And also, one thing DraftKings does, one of many things DraftKings does really well is live betting. And if uh, if you don't want to get involved pregame, get involved during the game if you want to. You know, if Georgia strikes early, I might look to grab a you know a bigger number with Bama. And I, I think live betting is the way I'm going to play this one. Let me throw you uh, some numbers. Uh, the last seven SEC championship games, 80, 65, 88, 47, 63, 35, 70. Overs have hit, and I saw uh, Stucky over at the Action Network point this out, 13 of the last 17 or 18 of SEC championships. There's one push in there. I think ultimately, and you've heard it a lot this week, it's a fast track. It is, and with these athletes that are out there, 
And I think the Georgia offense, Matt, as we have watched it as this year has gone on, I have continued to be impressed by the play of Carson Beck, uh, Kendall Milton, Edwards, the two running backs that they have. Brock Bowers didn't play last week, still coming back from that ankle injury, but I think that was very precautionary by uh, Kirby Smart to keep out Brock Bowers. I just I like the weapons that we've seen from Georgia's offense and – that being said, I think Alabama's D, uh, offense can put up some points, too. I think Jalen Milrow, if you can find a, a rushing prop, I think he's going to utilize his legs a bunch in this game. I'm not a big totals guy, and I'm especially not a big over guy, but I do think, Matt, these two offenses, the history of this SEC championship, I, I've heard varying opinions on both sides this week. You know, you've seen some under money come in. This got as high as 55 and a half out there. It has gotten as low as 53, I, I took the over four, 54, uh, still available right now. I, I think this is an over game. And, and to your point, Matt, if it gets off to a sluggish start, maybe you could get an over 48 or something like that or over 50 in this game. I do think the Georgia defense is going to give something up to this tight offense. I, I prefer the over here. I think we've got a much better chance of a shootout breaking out than we do a defensive struggle or even a, uh, a game that's like 24-21. Over the total of 54, I think, is a uh, – a bet I'm going to add here. I was looking at this last night, and I was very close to playing it, and uh, that's what I'm going to play. And I'm, I'm going to have to lie bet the side just because if you give me seven, right now I'd take it with Nick Saban, but I've got to have seven to take it with the Tide, and that's not going to come back pregame. So live betting is always an option. Don't forget that. If you got the time and you have the uh, resources, uh, th this is the type of game where I think live betting is uh, a, a pretty good option too. That game at 4 o'clock Eastern in his normal spot on CBS, number one Georgia, number eight Alabama, and a game that many Texas fans and many Oregon fans likely will be cheering for the dog to win the ACC championship. We won't have a full breakdown of this one here. We'll hit it on the other side of the break, Matt, but Louisville, Florida State, as we sit here, more Louisville money hitting the market as this has gotten down to as low as one and a half Florida State, the very short favorite, 8 p.m. on ABC. I like Jeff Brom in big games, especially as an underdog. Do you remember what happened in the Notre Dame-Louisville game this year? I was aware. Okay. Yeah, I was aware. More on the ACC Championship. Louisville and Florida State also in that primetime slot. Iowa-Michigan. Could we get an Iowa over at some point? Come on back. It's the VSIN College Football Betting Podcast. This is VEASAN's College Football Betting Podcast. Got to take a small break to tell you about Zen Nicotine Pouches. We're always debating what a team needs to do to get to number one. But Zen Nicotine Pouches are already there. It's helped millions of people achieve lasting change, earning the title of America's number one nicotine pouch. Find your Zen at your local convenience store or online, Zinn.com. That's Z Y N. Dot com warning this product does contain nicotine nicotine an addictive chemical alongside matt humans i am tim murray it is the v sin college football betting podcast championship weekend and uh, two games in las vegas friday night you've got oregon taking on washington matt gonna take the 10 with the huskies in that one and still to come our previews of all of the group of five games including the mountain west championship here in las vegas as well as unlv will take on boise state but 8 o'clock Eastern, two primetime games, and we mentioned it before break. We've got number 14 Louisville coming off a loss to rival Kentucky, a best bet for Matt last week. Good call by him as Kentucky not only covered the seven, won the game outright against the Cardinals, and you've got number four Florida State who trailed 12 to nothing on the road in the swamp but found a way to win and also cover uh, that game against their arch rival, the Florida Gators. So as I mentioned uh, going to break, Matt, Florida State has, uh, or Louisville, that is, has been steadily bet 
all week long, and this number has come down to two at DraftKings, a couple other shops showing two, and we've gotten down to one and a half. And obviously, Florida State uh, dealing with, as we all know, the loss of Jordan Travis, their star quarterback, Tate Rodemaker, had to step in and uh, start last week. He went 12 of 25 against Florida for 134 yards. Trey Benson had 95 yards on the ground. Florida State had just 224 yards of offense last week against Florida, Matt. Yeah, and the Seminoles are lucky. The Florida is a poorly coached team. Or uh, Sunbelt Billy. Yeah, or Florida State would not be an undefeated team right now. I, I think, you know, it's unfortunate, too, because you're playing your quarterback, Jordan Travis, in a game against North Alabama when you're a 48-point favorite, and that's going to ruin your season. It's, it's a totally different Florida State team uh, without Travis. Offense is not dynamic, and it's uh, – I think everybody knows that Florida State without Jordan Travis does not deserve to be a playoff team, but it's up to Louisville here to knock out the Seminoles, and I think Jeff Brom in pretty good position uh, to do it, especially after the loss to Kentucky a week ago. Cardinals had the big win in Miami. They clinched a spot in the ACC championship game. They come home, play Kentucky, and what was kind of a weird game uh, where the Wildcats turned the tables late on a couple big plays, and uh, – uh, I thought the Cardinals were going to be a little emotional, emotionally uh, flat, even though that was a rivalry game, and they were. But now they're going to be back up for this game. And uh, Jeff Brown was coached in the Big Ten championship game a year ago at Purdue. He was a big dog in that game. And don't forget that, you know, he coached that Purdue offense that outgained Michigan by about, what, 70 or 80 yards in that game and uh, was very competitive. Brahm is 28-15-1 against the spread in his career as a dog. 28-15, that's a pretty good dog mark. After a loss, 8-3 and three straight up, 11-0 and 0 against the spread, and he's off a loss. And I talked to with, uh, Nick Bogdanovich, Circus Sports Odds Maker, uh, sharp college football guy. He said every sharp quote is, every sharp in the world is betting on Louisville this week. Um, I didn't get the best number here. I took Louisville plus two and a half. I still like that side. I think the uh, the quarterback drop-off is too big of a hurdle for the uh, Seminoles to overcome. Look, as a football fan, I really want Florida State to lose. And that's no <laughs> knock on Florida State, but I think a playoff, Matt, of <clears throat> Georgia, Oregon, Michigan, and Texas would be phenomenal. That would be great. And I think those would be great matchups. Um, and we need Florida State to lose because I am not of the mindset, even though there are people out there championing for it, that if Florida State wins, they're going to be left out. I don't think there's going to be a 13-0 Power 5 champion left out. Uh, so uh, I'm going to cheer for your bet uh, as a football fan and as your friend because I want your you bet to come there's home. a chance Florida State wins this game and still gets left out of the playoff. I, I doubt it, but uh, I, I, I understand the arguments uh, from some. I would be surprised if we saw that. All right, also on Saturday night, Lucas Oil Stadium gets another barn burner. Uh, please, I guess the Big Ten is going away from co uh, conferences next year, thankfully, or divisions. Iowa catching 22 against Michigan with a total of 35, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Harbaugh back on the sidelines. Michigan course coming off of the victory over Ohio State 30 to 24 over hit in that game much to my chagrin that one nearly had no chance and then Iowa did it again their mojo uh whatever it is whether it's special teams magic whether it's fumble luck two fumbles they recovered both of them at in that game it just continues to come up roses for the Iowa Hawkeyes does the magic run out here for Iowa? Anything that interests you in this Big Ten championship? Game? Yeah, I'm interested. You know, anytime you've uh, got a favorite this big in a championship game and a, and a total this low, I think it, as a handicapper, it's intriguing because you got a let's say a 23 point favorite and a total of 35. How often do you see something like that? Uh, but Iowa's obviously a unique uh, case. You know, in that Florida State Louisville game, I like the under. But that total drop from 53 and a half to 47 and a half. Uh, here, I'd like to play the over. If the total drops to 34, I'll think about it because I'm concerned about a 31 to three type of game. So 34 would be the only number I could play this over. But uh, Tim, we've already seen this game. We saw it two years ago. Michigan yep. beat Iowa. 42 to three. 42 to three. I, th I think it could be similar this time. Deacon Hill, the quarterback for the Hawkeyes, 
is a disaster. He's got 48% completions, but if you watch him, you would swear it's 25% completions. <laughs> and, um, you know, that game against Nebraska last week, the Hawkeyes capitalized on Nebraska being an incompetent team, especially on the offensive side, incompetent offense. Well, that's not going to be the case this week. I just don't think that Iowa has got enough to hang in there. I can't lay the points just because that's uh, not the type of uh, better I am. I can't lay a big number like this, but I don't think I don't think Iowa's got enough firepower, not even close to it, to uh, to interest me into uh, taking the points here. Could you be interested in going over twenty-seven and a half points for Michigan? I could, but I also hear your concern is that uh, Michigan gets up twenty-one nothing. They're like, we're just going to the playoff. It's twenty-four zero. Michigan just says, hey, let's let off the gas. We're going to run out this clock, and we yep. got a we got a playoff to look forward to. No reason to get somebody hurt like the Jordan Travis situation, right? Jordan Travis situation, Preston Stone situation. Yep. As we'll get to the group of five right now. So there you go, your Power Five championships. Let's slip in a, a group of five game. Let's go back to Friday night, seven p.m. This one will be on a home field. The Liberty Flames coming in at number 24 in uh, the most recent college football playoff rankings. Liberty Flames, if uh, it looks like Tulane were to get upset, Liberty could be in a good shape to uh, potentially grab the G5 bid to the New Year's Six. CBS Sports Network, you've got New Mexico State against Liberty. This is a rematch uh, of a game that we saw earlier this year. Very early on in the season, Matt, we saw Liberty win this game, just their second game of the season. This game happened back on September 9th, and New Mexico State lost to Liberty uh, at, in Lynchburg. 33 to 17. Uh, New Mexico State, I got to give them credit uh, because last week my favorite bet of the week was Jacksonville State. Thought New Mexico State coming off the Auburn win, looking ahead to Liberty, would have no motivation, and uh, they were able to find a way to win that one. Uh, Diego Pavia, very impressive uh, player, even though he turned the ball over a handful of times. New Mexico State had four turnovers in that game. I haven't gotten there yet. I'm I'm intrigued by the dog here in this spot. Jerry Kill has just done an incredible job uh, with this program. Got him to a bowl game last year. First year of Conference USA, Matt. Here they are in the Conference Championship game. Uh, haven't got there yet. Intrigued by the dog, but no play yet on the CUSA Championship. Yeah, I'm with you for the most part. I, I'm, I'm not going to play the dog here because you go back and look at Liberty. Uh, the, the Flames have pretty much answered every challenge. Yep. They've been faced with, and they've won a lot of these games by big margins. I can't say enough good things about Jerry Kill and the job he's done at New Mexico State pretty much for most of my lifetime. This Aggies program has been a doormat, a laughing stock, you know, in Las Cruces. And for New Mexico State, the program's really, uh, I think, in the last five or six years has improved. But what Jerry Kill's done here is a remarkable job. Jed Fish at Arizona is my coach of the year, but I think Jerry, uh, Jerry Kill is worth a mention, honorable mention. What he's done in New Mexico State, but the, I think the favorite's a little bit too strong here, and this is going to be a pass for me. Jamie Chadwell, his year, his first year, leaving Coastal, going to Liberty, uh, getting a big payday. What he has done with Caden... Coastal coaching drop off at Coastal? Yeah, mm, not really. Uh, Liberty or oh, Coastal. Coastal? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, Tim Beck. No thanks. Uh, Caden Salter, by the way, has been. A lot of fun to watch. So uh, if you haven't seen him yet, 7 o'clock Eastern on Saturday. Uh, We'll see if we can slip this one in. Noon Eastern on Saturday. Excuse me. uh, CUSA Friday night. Uh, uh, We'll tease it and hit it on the other side. We've got the MAC Championship, Noon Eastern, Miami versus Toledo. Another potential revenge situation. And then the Mountain West Championship, Boise and UNLV. We'll put a bow on all the G5 Championship games. And, of course, it wouldn't be a... Power, it wouldn't be a VSIN college football betting podcast with our without our best bet recap. We'll do that as well. Wrapping things up next, it is the VSIN college football betting podcast. Come on back. This is VEASAN's College Football Betting Podcast. Become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today and get a daily email recapping all the best bets from our show hosts and guests. You'll get unlimited access to our VEASAN.com slash picks page, sort picks by sport, matchup, event date, and more. You can check the top VEASAN experts leaderboard to view betting records, profit and ROI, and see which 
VEASAN expert has the hot hand for VEASAN pro picks, betting splits, betting guides, plus 24-7 video access. Become a VEASAN pro subscriber today. Head on over to VEASAN.com slash subscribe. It is the VEASAN College Football Betting Podcast. Alongside Matt Humans. I am Tim Murray. Bunch of group of five championships on Saturday to hit on before we get to our best bet recap. Noon Eastern at Ford Field in Detroit. The MAC championship has Miami of Ohio against the Toledo Rockets. Toledo, a impressive win last weekend covering the spread. Miami, fortunate to get over Ball State, did not cover a best bet on the show from Wes Reynolds. Was uh, Ball State chirp, chirp, so a good hit for uh, Wes Reynolds as he sat in for Matt last week. Miami, even with the non-cover last week, Matt, 9-3, and three, ATS this year, but of course they have been dealing without their starting quarterback, Brett Gabbert, the younger brother of Blaine Gabbert. He was hurt and lost for the season against Toledo, but you think back to that game on October 21st, Matt, Miami's defense stepped up even in the 21-17 loss as uh, they held Toledo to just 316 yards total in this game is sitting at 44 and this was a game that the total opened as high as 46 and a half so you've seen under money hit the market Daquan Finn the name to know for Toledo very impressive dual threat quarterback over 2300 passing yards 530 yards on the ground Penny Boone the running back for Toledo, 1,300 yards on the ground, 15 touchdowns so far this year. Avion Smith, as mentioned, took over for Brett Gabbert. Not a big-time thrower, Matt. Can utilize his legs a little bit. Actually rushed more last year than he has so far this year. Jason Candle, he has been uh, named or uh, has been mentioned in some coaching um jobs out there if you look at historically not great as a big favorite in that role um, I thought about taking Miami plus the points here but I'm actually going to take the under in this one I mentioned Miami this is a under team Uh, they've gone under in seven of their 12 games Matt and especially without Brett Gabbert there I think they're going to want to slow this game down against Toledo like they did the first time that they met and uh Also, I don't know if Miami can really score a ton of points uh, looking at that offense and how they've played since Brett Gabbard uh, exited with the injury. So I'm going to go under 44. Not the best number, obviously. It was uh, north of a key of 45 earlier this week. But uh, I think this is a low-scoring game at Ford Field, noon kick time there in, uh, in Detroit. So I'll go under 44 on Miami and Toledo here. Yeah, I don't have a play on this game. I, w- I would like to play the dog, Miami, at plus eight. Number looks a little bit high, but not big fan of Avion Smith, the quarterback uh, for the Red Hawks. After he entered that game against Toledo, uh, that was on uh, October fir- uh, 21st. Toledo won that game 21-17. After Smith entered, Miami offense ran 16 plays for 44 yards. He's not really a, a true dual-threat quarterback. 52.5% completions, 3.4 yards per carry. It's not enough here to uh, get me on the Red Hawks. In eight conference games, Miami held Mac opponents to just 86 points. So uh, hopefully they can ugly it up, slow it down, and uh, we can get under 44. Sounds like a good play. We'll it see. Does. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, let's get to uh, a game that's really intriguing, Matt. Here in Las Vegas, uh, the computers spit out after San Jose State beat UNLV that UNLV would host Boise State in the Mountain West Championship game as Boise, UNLV, and San Jose State all wrapped up the season tied at 6-2. and two. This game will be 3 p.m. Eastern, noon local on Fox. And uh, we've seen uh, an interesting movement in this one as uh, Circa has actually gotten out to three in favor of Boise State. UNLV, as many people know, Best or one of the best cover teams in all of college football, 10 and two against the number. They did not cover against Colorado State in a win earlier this year. And then they did not cover last weekend against San Jose State. Boise State looked like it was one of the more disappointing teams in college football this year, Matt. They go out and they fire Andy Avalos when they're five and five after a win over New Mexico. Team responded with a 45-10 win over Utah State and then beat Air Force and covered 27-19 to last week. This team has two stud running backs in Ashton Genty and George Halani. Uh, George Halani uh, running for 178 yards against Utah State. Genty, 107. I don't love Taylor Green, the quarterback for Boise State, but 
What I saw last week, even though Barry Odom has done an incredible job, rightfully so, the Mountain West Coach of the Year, San Jose State was able to run all over UNLV last year, last week, I should say. 233 rushing yards. Kyrie Robinson, a buck 65 on the ground. Uh, I'm going to go Boise State on the money line here. Uh, find the cheapest one. I gave it out earlier this week on Prime Primetime at minus 135. It's out of minus 140 or so. Uh, so we're going to go with the Broncos here on the money line. What does worry me, though, Ricky White. If you haven't seen him play, this dude is a stud. Wide receiver for UNLV, over 1,300 receiving yards, Matt. He's gone over 100 yards receiving in each of the last five games, six of the last seven for the Rebels. I'm a little troubled by uh, what I saw from the Rebels a week ago in that San Jose State game, especially the defense, and I fell behind early, fought back in the game. But the betting market was against UNLV last week, and obviously that was the right move. Uh, Boise's been here before. Hey, this is why you fire coaches in the middle of a season, right? When you see what the uh, Broncos do to rally and make the conference championship game. I, I lean Boise here. I have not played this yet. If I do play Boise, it'll be on the money line too. Uh, right now, DraftKings, that's minus 142. That's a fair price. So I have not decided how to play this. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. What is the computer formula that spit out UNLV is going to be the home team in the Mountain West? Rebels did not beat Boise, Fresno, or San Jose, but they get to host a conference championship game. I think the computer formula was that Las Vegas has an NFL stadium and a bunch of casinos and hotel rooms. That'd be a better place to host a game. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I saw one that said, uh, someone sent me a text that said the tiebreaker for the Pac-12, Big 12, Big 10, SEC, and ACC would have all had Boise State hosting San Jose State, but... Here we are, UNLV <laughs> yeah, taking out Boise yeah. State. But uh, the consolation prize, as we mentioned, for San Jose State, they get to go to Hawaii uh, for one. their bowl game. All right, we'll put these two together because I don't have a play on either one. I don't think you do either. Uh, I was ready to jump in on the ponies. I thought they were going to close a favorite yep. if Preston Stone was healthy. But unfortunately for Preston Stone, lost for the season last week in SMU's victory over Navy. Both of these teams undefeated in AAC play. Tulane number 22, SMU uh, unranked 4 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Uh, it's interesting, Matt. This number got as high as six, and now the betting market coming back down despite the fact that Preston Stone is out for the ponies. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> a tough handicap here because without the uh, Mustangs quarterback, Stone, I really don't want to be on that side, but one of the sharpest college football betters I know loves SMU in this game, and I just can't get there. Uh, I can't do it. Can't do it with the quarterback uh, switch. And I like Willie Fritz at Tulane quite a bit, too. And you got to wonder, at what point is this guy going to get a really big job? Is he going to get the Houston this, job? This or, summer? Well, uh, I think uh, I think uh, Jeff Trailer from Jeff UTSA Trailer, might be headed to Houston. Trailer's probably going to get the Houston job. Trailer, really good, good choice, I think, for Texas A&M. Uh, but Willie Fritz is one of those guys done a hell of a job, too, and probably deserves uh, a bigger job. But that, all that stuff aside, yeah, I, this is another dog I can't get on because of the quarterback situation. Kevin Jennings will step in uh, for Preston Stone, that number three and a half pretty much market-wide. Uh, neither Matt or, uh, or I have a play on the Sun Belt Championship, 4 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. I believe our colleague Stormy Bonatoni will be on the sidelines of that one. Uh, consensus line there, five for uh, that game between App State and Troy. All right, best bet recap time. Uh, I'll start with mine. We're going to go Boise State, Matt, on the money line. Uh, cheapest money line out there, whatever you can find. 135 was what I played earlier this week, 140, 142 or so now. We're going to go over the total in Alabama, Georgia, and we're going to go under the total in Toledo, Miami, over 54, under 44. Last week was awful, so uh, we try to bounce back here. Matt, final 30 seconds, run through your plays. Yeah, I'm with three and two last week. Tim, I predict you're going to have a winning week on your three plays there. Uh, I like your plays. I'm going to go uh, Washington plus 10, Pac-12 championship game Friday night in Vegas. Give me Mike Gundy in the points, Oklahoma State plus 15 and a half, and we'll go Louisville to take down Florida State, Cardinals plus two and a half. Hopefully at least two winners out of those three plays. Let's have ourselves. Let's wrap up the week, wrap up the regular season with a winning week. And then it's bowl season, baby. And hopefully that is a money-making time. Get on those numbers quickly. Bowl matchups come out on Sunday. So make sure you're uh, keeping an eye on the market. 
For Matt Humans, I am Tim Murray. This has been the VSIN College Football Betting Podcast. As always, please rate, review, and subscribe because we ain't done yet. We got the bowl season just around the corner. This is the VSIN College Football Betting Podcast.